when we get to bold predictions about those Tennessee volunteers. So, uh, Caleb, that is on the website. People can read that at your leisure. But I've got five bold predictions for the Tennessee Vols. And you tell me if you agree or disagree. All right, so let's start with this. Number one, the Vols will have three sacks in the game. I say that because... Tennessee has a fantastic group of defensive linemen that go three deep, and you have a Oklahoma offensive line that has been beat all the Hades. So do you agree or disagree with that, Caleb? That's a thousand percent true. I mean, I'm willing to say that is like the truest statement of statements. I might set it at five. Hey now. I like it. Tennessee quarterback Nico Iamaleava will be the star. Now, that's a broad terminology, so I, I didn't want to put 350 yards or anything. So I've done a lot of studying of Oklahoma and defensively what they like to do under Brent Venables. And because I'm a nerd and I have nothing better to do at 345 a.m. So um, he drops – he likes to bring his safety up. He's going to stop the run first. And Tennessee may be able to run the ball with a loaded box. I think their ball – their – I think their offensive line is very good. So they may be able to run the ball with a loaded box, but I don't think so. I think they'll take more shots downfield. I'm talking about really downfield, like the Brazil completion, as I'm not talking about slants on that sort of thing. I think they're going to take some real shots downfield because they're going to play one safety over top. Now, you could see Brent Venables do something completely different, then everything changes, but he wants. He wants people in the box. He wants to stop the run. So I think the shots are going to be there. And if I'm him, I don't think this is the correct line of thinking, but I think it's the way coaches think. You're going to be like, I'm going to make that red shirt freshman prove it to me. And if he prove, proves it to me and has a great day, then I'll just say that I lost. Can you see I, that being, going through his mind this week? Three reasons I fully agree with you, but there's three points I want to make, and they, they bolster your point, but they also reveal something. Um, the first is yes, and I think even more so now in the college football playoff era, I think coaches are not afraid to test something in a game, even if it costs them, because you can still make the playoff. Is that fair to say? Yes. So that part's true. I fully agree with you, because what did I say at the beginning of the year? What have I said since January? Oklahoma will be Nico Yamalov's breakout game. It'll be exactly what it was for Peyton Manning against Arkansas in 1995, when he just lit up Arkansas and had his coming out party. So I'm totally 1,000% on your side with this. Um, but three, what you said is very revealing, Dave, with him bringing up a safety because I was concerned, and I, I think a lot of Tennessee fans have been concerned the last time Heupel faced Venables. He was the offensive coordinator at OU. Venables was the defense coordinator at Clemson. Oklahoma lost, And Oklahoma's offense scored six points in that game, and then Heupel got fired. And it was, does Venables have Heupel's number? Well, what you just told me, actually jives with Bob Stoops trying to force the RPO, the read option system on Hypo when he doesn't run that. And Dave, let's call it what it is. Cheating up a safety, that is the best way to stop the RPO offense, isn't it? It's exactly what he wants to do. That's exactly what he wants to do. And that's what he wants to stop first. And it's not a matchup for the air raid offense, is it? No. no. And Josh Hypo has air raid principles. Yes. So you're exactly right. So my next statement is relative. Again, so I don't know how bold these are. You you can decide, but I'm just telling you what's going to happen in the game, and I've been spot on to this point. Uh, Brent Venables will stop the run. Now, you can define that however you want to. You can define that as he'll come out and stop the run for a quarter, and Tennessee will open things up and then end up running the ball later in the game. So Tennessee could still have 100, 125 yards, but I do not believe – this will be one of those games that they're able to push their opponent around and get 250 yards. Like North Carolina, uh, NC State, if they wanted to, they could still be running the football against NC State, right? This That's not going to be the situation unless the score gets out of hand. Yeah, no. And, and I'm not discounting, and I want to be clear, I'm not discounting Tennessee's offensive line. So, Coop, if you're watching, I just think he's going to walk people into the box and they average giving up 2.2 yards per carry. So I'm going to take a step further. Yes. 
Y'all are doing it because of the last two things you said. Y'all are all doing a victory lap on me about Dylan Sampson. I'm going to give him another week. I'm going to give him this weekend. If Dylan Sampson balls out this weekend, Dave, I will come on on Monday and say I was 100% wrong and I am done saying anything negative. But yeah. here's the thing. He will be tested in his ability to run the ball in this game. But, David, is it fair to say this too? He's going to be tested in pass pro finally in this game like he never has been, won't he? Yes. Because he's got to pick up those blitzes. Yes. And there is actually a story up now where Cooper Mays talks about, if you want to go to Off the Hook Sports, talk specifically about the fact that Dylan Sampson and Deshaun Bishop saved uh, a, a couple, three sacks this year in their pass pro. Uh, the term is scratch where it itches. I learned from Coop, and you can learn on offthehooksports.com. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Keep your Make sure the notifications are on, too, because we've got a lot of big things coming down the pike. Um, later in the program, by the way, we're going to talk about the dumpster fire that is the Florida Gators with Edgar Thompson of the Orlando Sentinel. Next bold prediction, Tennessee's streak of no offensive touchdowns will end. Let's be honest. It's a cool stat. Four games, 16 quarters, no offensive touchdowns. But look who it came against. I mean, the two ranked teams had horrible offenses. More so Iowa than NC State. I think Tennessee's just better defensively than when they played in the Citrus Bowl. But I think that streak comes to an end. Um, I'll add to that if you would like. Or would you like to address that one before I get to the next one? You ready for this, Dave? Yep. You're wrong. Oklahoma's okay. not going to score an offensive touchdown. They have the worst offensive line in the SEC, which is making well, their offense as bad as Iowa's and NC State's right now. Right. He, and I've been a lot, around a lot of programs that did this. They suffered injuries early in camp and early in the season. And the idea is that all these guys, you're going to get them healthy, so you hold them back. They played their third-string center at times this season, guys, for those of you that don't know. <coughs> Pardon me. So you put this group together that you think is going to be really, really good, Caleb, and they haven't played together, so they don't have chemistry. So even Nine. if they're suddenly, you know, tomorrow, all completely healthy, there's no chemistry there. So that goes back to the sack prediction, which I would probably up to four if I were. It's not the same right as, there. you're right, there's a difference between playing a vanilla style and then putting it all together versus your first real opponent, which, by the way, Florida used to do. I know people would be like, why do the Florida quarterbacks always have their breakout game against Tennessee? I'm like, that's because that Urban Meyer, Steve Spurrier was not going to show anything they could do before they play Tennessee. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter, right? And yep. uh, there's a difference between so you that. got this streak continuing of no offensive touchdowns to that would be only topped if if they held Oklahoma if they hold Oklahoma for two quarters without a score then they would tie second place and that'd be eighteen quarters which I believe happened in the sixties one happened in the sixties one happened in the fifties one was eighteen one was. Uh, 16 so they're at 16 now at that point if they were to hold oklahoma scoreless in the for the first three quarters that would be one of the most amazing records that is difficult to explain so people don't get it a lot but if they got to that would be 19 scoreless quarters without giving up an offensive touchdown okay that would be the record going back to 60 consecutive Orders under General Nealon of not giving up a uh, a fourth a, a an offensive touchdown. Caleb, okay, that to me is an epic record. And that's 60 quarters of not giving up a point with General Nealon. But yeah, no, it's it's an incredible record. And but in this day of uh, this day and age of college football, it's just I mean that's even more unheard of. No, I totally agree. I yeah. totally agree. Okay, so and then we get to what is my next prediction? Um Tennessee's defense will score, set one up. I believe in this. I probably believe in this one more than any of the other ones. Yeah, no, I think you're right. They'll absolutely do that. They're, they're if, I set it up, if I set it up, I'll give some parameters so that I can't say, oh, they set up a score in the, uh, their own 20 and Nico took them 80 yards. I'll say within the 35-yard line. Okay. They'll, get, they'll spot the offense the ball within the 35-yard line or score a touchdown themselves at one point. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's, that's a great way to put it. All right, so – are you ready for my final prediction for the game? Are you excited about that? Do we need a drum roll? Lego. Lego. Okay. 
Tennessee wins this football game 42 to 13 in a game that should be 35 to 13 under normal circumstances, but Tennessee will tack one on late because of the Josh Heupel Oklahoma ties. Caleb, your thoughts. I am not giving a score prediction, but okay. I, I will say just in the general vicinity, I'll say I agree with you. 